Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. We'll be starting off the front page review with The Nation. Major headline. I won't marginalize any part of Nigeria, says Tinubu. Um, and in other news, Minister blames NIS for passport issuance crisis. Labor disrupts or we rebound flights in Lagos, Abuja, others. Senate okays restructuring of 22.7 trillion on budgeted loan. Sudan, two aircrafts flying back 376 Nigerians. 70% of savings in Nigerian banks now in US dollars, says IMF. Inflation exchange rate fuel action. Zoning of National Assembly top post. APC targets consensus. In other news, Labour Party threatens lawmakers elect with sanction over party crisis. Senate joins in leniency plea for Ikwirimadu. Second term, Lagos raises panel of 22. And what story are we going to start with? The, there's a the picture headline. of um, um, the our president-elect. Yes. He was cutting the ribbon. <laughs> yes, sir. And it, with him was um, the oh, wow. governor of Wiki, as well as governor of your state, as well as Bajabi Amela, as well as governor Badaru. So let me you know, just so. tell the story. So yesterday it was hosted by the governor of River State, uh, yes, on Wiki. And the people of River State, because the moment is plane approached the airport in Port Harcourt, you should have seen the crowd. We thought River State was, you know, an opposition state, but then they loved the president-elect and they hosted him well. He came to, they love their to cut the ribbon and commission all the uh, 12 flyovers built by the River State governor. He inaugurated the Rumukota Rumola flyover bridge and he was very kind in speech to the governor. He talked about how his uh, posterity will be kind to him, his will be kind to him for his, you know, his landmark projects that he did across the state. And he said that he used the opportunity to address Nigeria and how he will approach Nigeria. He said, I will not marginalize any region, and I will, uh, but I will leave legacy projects across the length and breadth of Nigeria and that assuring that, you know, all areas will be developed under his administration. Mm. And um, there was a small jab <laughs> because he said the, the governor played a joke and said, um, will he be getting anything back for, you know, some of He said, I don't owe you, but if you need anything, lobby. <laughs> so, well, River is State is a, is, a key, is a gift that keeps giving. Give. We are unlocking and unlocking. Yes. Countdown is project, project, project. Yes. Mariam, what story do you have? Yes, so I have 40% of savings in Nigerian banks now in US dollars, says IMF. So um, the IMF, in a recent um, report, has blamed this trend of saving in hard currency on the rising inflation and exchange rate um, volatility. Um, and it says that this practice is a confirmation of loss of confidence in the local currency, and it is usually difficult, you know, to reverse that even if what had triggered this um, lack of trust in the currency is reversed, is worked on, it will still be hard for people to trust and go back, you know, to the way it's supposed to be. And um, they're explaining that the use of dollars for the use of dollars for storing value, of course, we know wasn't as a result of the narrowed redesign and the cashless policy. And so uh, we hope that finally, um, now that we're handling it, this is something that would reverse. But it, is, it just shows that Nigerians do not have any confidence in our um, local currency, in our Naira. And it does not speak, it does not, you know, bode well for our economy. And... Um, um, IMF is also saying that even if we sort our issues out, it will still take a long time to reverse. And I know of many Nigerians who have decided, you know what, any small naira I have, I'll change it into dollars because I don't want our wahala. Today is one, you know, a particular exchange rate. Tomorrow is falling. The next day it's gone so high. So we will see how, you know, we sort it out with the CBN governor looking at it and seeing what he will do. So following up with the story I took yesterday about the Senate setting up a committee to, to look into the passport issuance delay and the hardship it's causing Nigerians. Um, the minister, Rebwe Shola, has replied and said that it is the Nigerian Immigration Service that they are the ones to be blamed for any issue with passport delay. He said that just about last year, when they issued a reform to, to um, 
the reform to pr the process reforms of how you get a passport, it suddenly became delayed. That they've never had an issue of scarcity of booklets. That it is people within yes, yes. Um, the w within immigration, the Nigerian Immigration Service, are the ones spreading that rumor that there is um, um, lack of enough booklets. That there are enough booklets. He understands that the issue might be ability to um, the shortage, um, in having enough people to respond having enough manpower to respond at part time, but that there is no shortage of booklets, that's one. Number two, it is the tout that is begging Nigeria not to patronize touts and um, unscrupulous NIS um, officials that are extorting money from applicants. While this sounds good, I would love not to patronize touts. I would love not to patronize um, <laughs> NIS officials, but if they would help me get my passport out within a month, as opposed to six months, you cannot blame Nigerians who are trying to mix the, uh, trying to get to an end from getting a solution to their specific problem. The point is clean out. We Nigerians would want the minister to help within the short term before he leaves, flush out the challenges within the system and penalize. We're seeing the police penalizing officials yes. that are doing something wrong. We're seeing NDLA naming and shaming as well. So let's see the Nigerian Immigration Service also. I, I, um, Call out people that they see to be corrupt because it cannot be important. It's not. It can't be that everybody that is working within that system is clean, or you cannot identify one person at least to make a scapegoat who is doing something wrong. Moving on to the next paper, we'll be doing the punch. Major headline: 26 days to go. Outrage as Senate approves Buhari's 22.7 trillion extra budgetary spending. Fresh borrowing from CBN illegal. Suspicious, says Neka, an LCCI economist. In other news, you would see Agenda 2050. Federal government projects $33,000 per capita GDP. APC National Working Committee fails to zone National Assembly leadership seats. Police arrest or shoot twins for cultism. Mm. Senate proposes life jail for unlawful explosive makers. Strike. Resident doctor says federal government's threats annoying. The federal government discos, disconnects discos from national greed over debt. Can, can. Wow, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Sudan, 376 stranded Nigerians are lifted from Egypt. So what story are we starting with? Hey, let's start with discos because it's been a week of darkness in my estate. Wow. And the giant broke yesterday. Oh. Against norms, I had to go scouting for water. You know, so before my husband came in the night with an alternative generator to get water, it's been bad. And I have been back and forth. But the story in the paper, let's just drop it, is that the transmission company has decided to disconnect defaulting these schools for outstanding debts. So wow. some of them are owing. And they said between the transmission company of Nigeria and the market operator who decided to disconnect them, they've given notices over and over to some of these discos. The punch named some of them, and I looked in the story carefully. I did not see my disco, but I don't know why. My disco and transmission company are having these issues. And they said, based on the 60 days extension period that has been given to them, they, you know, hope that the defaulters will be able to come back and comply with provisions of the rules, which involves paying, of course, outstanding invoices, posting of adequate bank guarantees, forwarding of the active power purchase agreement as the case may be across them to the market operator and the TCN. I hope that, you know, this is resolved quickly because the experience is nasty. The entire community people were scouting for water. Those of us who have always enjoyed the con convenience of using our generators, I didn't Not expect, because I have a three um, pumping machine system. Mm -hmm. If I do not clean my water through a filter, I cannot use it. It comes out brown. So it has to go through that system. One summer, civil two of them bringing the water into. It was a complete system. And imagine, I, over a week, over days using it, crushed my generator. Pata pata yes. Wow. It's not a good experience. Of course there are not. many others that are even having it, even tougher. So but I hear there are some people in Lagos that don't have water. I said there five this morning. My neighbor's <laughs> been She's broken. doing water by herself. No, I'm saying that they don't even have, they cannot even dig like the borehole and oh, whatever in their yes, area. In some places. Wow. <laughs> they have to let's, buy water. Yeah, let's take a break. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the front pages of the newspaper and we are on the punch. So, Mariam, you want to yeah, talk about Yes, so strike? Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors are threatening to go on strike if their demands are not met. Um, and uh, doctors are demanding an immediate increase in the consolidated me 
medical salary structure to the tune of 200% of the current gross salaries of doctors. He also wants the immediate withdrawal of the bill seeking to compel medical and dental graduates to render five-year compulsory services in Nigeria um, before being granted full license to practice. Remember that controversial one. They also want the immediate implementation of CONMES, domestication of the Medical Residency Training Act, and review of hazard allowance by all the state governments, as well as private tertiary health institutions where any form of residency training is done, among many other demands. Um, but they're also saying that, you know, they, since they put out their demand and they're actually supposed to be in a meeting with the federal government, they all, they, all they keep hearing are all sorts of threats on national television. And each time, you know, government issues those threats on TV, it angers um, the members, of, that's not. Uh, because for them, it means that, you know, they're not really interested in negotiating or resolving the issues. Um, but instead, they're going on, uh, they're going on TV to, to issue threats. And, um, and they're saying that this behavior, these threats will just lead to another nationwide strike. My own is, please, the strikes are enough. Let us learn to, um, you know, dialogue and really resolve the issues. We just celebrated, um, what was the day we just celebrated recently? Labor. Labor Day. And, you know, everybody just had fantastic things to say about each other. Let's, 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 keep it, let's keep it real <laughs> and sit at the table and negotiate and deal with these things instead of going on strike or threatening everybody. I'm just grateful there. that, you know, the administration of uh, the Labor Minister is going very soon. <laughs> Because his approach has always worsened the labor issues. <laughs> I hope that um, the new labor minister will be um, more empathetic towards workers. Okay. <clears throat> Let us <laughs> take the story. Um, so I, I'm taking the story about the outrage. Senate has approved loans to the Nigerian government just barely 26 days to go. And NECA and LCCI are speaking ag firmly against it, that the administration shouldn't be getting a loan of 22.7 trillion naira when they just have 26 days to go. The focus of the current administration should just be on winding down yes. their activities and transitioning to the new administration yes. as opposed to getting loans. However, it's like this loan um, request had been ongoing far before now. And the Senate had been trying to get more details about it. And from the perspective of Senate leader Ibrahim Gober, um, the, this is like a reduction from the amount they had asked for earlier. Um, I still feel like Nigerians should have clarity on what this money is going to be spent on and if it is a money that we have already spent. You know, that sometimes they are getting loan for money that has already gone out of their, that we've already technically spent, but we just haven't had access to the money. Um, moving on to Daily Sun. I won't manage, marginalize any part of Nigeria, says Tinubu. Hails Wiki for championing justice, but declines commitment on refund of money spent building federal roads, bridges, and rivers. In other news, court adjourns Kanu's application for medical leave. Work for national unity, northern elders tell Iwanyawu. Obi's mantra, mandatory for elected LP office holders, says party. National Assembly, that's, um, we are not in a hurry to zone offices, Adamu, APC chair. Police list 25 distressed barracks for demolition in Lagos. Opposition reps elects insist on contesting speakership position. Air Peace accuses NLC of targeting its operation. Senate approves federal government in 2.7 trillion. <coughs> Naira CBN loan requests as Buhari launches Nigeria Agenda 2050. Mm. There seem to be a lot of activities at mm. the tail end of this administration. <coughs> Surprising. But and what story are we starting with? Well, okay. Let's take the police. Okay. <laughs> you can go okay, first. Let me go. Okay. So Air Peace has accused NLC and TUC, <coughs> that's a trade union congress, of deliberately disrupting over its face off with the Imo state um, gov um, government. So the unions um, disrupted all flights to Oweria across airports in the country on Wednesday, um, Wednesday morning, and so many uh, passengers were stranded. Um, Airpeace <coughs> had written and said NLC and TUC officials stormed the Lagos airport and took over our counters, disrupting our operations because of an alleged misunderstanding that they have with the governor of Imo state, Hopu Zodima. While doing this, another airline was allowed to <coughs> operate into and out of Oweri. So they feel that they were select, it was a selective um, attack on them. Mm -hmm. That, um, first of all, this has nothing to do with them. 
um, if they have an issue, they should have gone straight to Imo State to handle you know, their issues and not target APs. And they're saying that this is not the first time that NLC, NLC. targets them, that there was another time when they were um, protesting the 18,000 Naira minimum wage and APIS was selectively or specifically targeted during, you know, the yes. protest. And they are saying that this particular one that happened Wednesday morning, APIS has lost about, I need to read this amount of money. <coughs> they said they have lost about 400 million Naira because of that, um, the protest that happened on Wednesday. Says, wow. Now, who is going to give them this 400 million Naira that they lost mm -hmm. because they did not do their business on that day? And I am hoping that we'll hear for, from the NLC and um, TUC why just airpiece was targeted if it was supposed to be something that, should, was, affect that should have affected everyone. Because they, they need to win. We, there's a trust relationship here. They're representing us, and so we must be sure that they're yeah, actually representing us appropriately. Uh, so, Nima, you were going to take the police barrack story. So, the IGP was represented by the police uh, uh, public relations officer, um, CSP Olumiwa, in Lagos yesterday, and he highlighted that 25 distressed barracks, this one suits me well, well that, you know, they've been marked in Lagos for demolition, and that they will partner with the Lagos State Governor to rebuild these barracks in a period, a short period, towards the end, they said maybe in two years, and then they will hand over to the former occupants the uh, barracks after rebuilding. Most of those barracks in Lagos are just, you know, a time bomb waiting to happen. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for this one. So the national, the speakership, we have not even sworn in the new administration. The speakership is generating a lot of no, this is the wave. Time. Yeah. So apparently, um, people that are elected officials that are in the opposition mm -hmm. are now coming together as a quorum that they are up to 180 members, being 50% of the um, national as the, the assembly, they have decided to come together, create an 11-man committee to pick someone to vie for the position of speaker of the National Assembly. Now, for those that don't understand, <coughs> usually it is the party at the presidency that should automatically just have the same the representation. No, not representation. They tend to just be the one, in the most majority. cases, to rule in the so, Senate and as well as in the House of Rep. But now, because they tend to be majority. But because it is a 50%, now the 50% um, opposition are coming together to oh. say that they would be vying for that position of Speaker of the National... There's going to be a lot of drama. Doing doing good lobbying there. They are doing a lot of lobbying, so right? We're well, likely to see a Saraki... Exactly. Of... We yes. saw it with Saraki, so maybe that's what yeah, we're But was to Saraki not meant to be... No, ah. he was in the opposition. He was in the opposition. No, he wasn't. He was in the... He was in the party. Okay, he was there's in never the... been a case of opposition ruling when... No, but a... he lobbied the Yes, he lobbied against into... the line of... Yes. Um, um, was the when they've already decided that they are going to be um, zoning, zoning. He lobbied against the zoned process yes. and got in, but he was in the party. But now we are having someone that is not in the ruling party saying they want to contest, and we should see how interesting that would. I, I love politics. I, I try not to love I don't politics. Love I, love politics. Business, <laughs> I don't. <but laughs> I love the intricacies. Nigerian Tribune is the next paper. Snubu to Wiki. I owe you nothing. Wow, what a way of couching that headline. <laughs> Police hands over. 215 electoral offenders to INEC for prosecution. Um, Buhari launches Agenda 2050, says Nigeria to become a top eco income economy. A papa led Labour Party faction holds neck in Buhari, in, Bo in Bauchi, says we will pursue obese petition to logical conclusion. Tenth Assembly, 180 minority members elect form coalition to produce speaker. I just took that story. Africans living in UK battle for survival, mm. that's a report. Burdened by cost of living, shrinking labor force, and homelessness. The APC National Working Committee ends a four hour meeting without decision on National Assembly leadership zoning. We are waiting for President elect input, says Adamu. Senate can't stop demolition work in Lagos Airport. That's from federal government. Police to demolish, rebuild 25 distressed barracks in Lagos. And, um, of course, Senate has approved the loan. So what story are we going with first? Mm. My story we the have, demolition? Let me take um, INEC. Okay. Um, has explained that 774 persons were arrested during this 2023 general election for various electoral offenses. And um, 
they are working with uh, you know the police to make sure that um, you know that prosecution is done, investigation is done, justice is is given, and they are also going to be collaborating with MBA for pro bono legal services. You know, for the electoral offenders during this time. And I think it's good that we're seeing it, because many Nigerians always ask the question, oh, they'll go quiet. But sometimes I think it's because we don't read the papers, we don't listen to the news. So we see that there is a process. And right now, all those who were found to have committed one um, offense or the other would be facing um, the court. Okay, so the demolition law. The Minister for Aviation. Adisirika was saying that you know, the Senate, even though the Senate has intervened between them and FAN over the demolition of offices belonging to certain agencies within the airport, he says that that Senate committee, headed by Senator Biodo Lujimi, cannot stop the demolition work. So the FEC has agreed and approved that they should go ahead with the demolition, and that's what he would do. But um, they're asking that he allows the Senate to uh, intervene and give time to it. <coughs> So um, there's a report released by the Black House Media, an African PR consultancy in the UK, and they did a survey of 1,200 African immigrants in the UK and said that they're comparing between last year and this year, they, they feel worse off, major concern being job security, um, clearing their debts, um, housing, security in retirement, and even paying their monthly bills. Many of them, about 69%, are planning to reduce their power usage, um, complaining of the fact that they, the cost of living has continued to um, increase in the UK, and it is affecting them. Um, a, Nigeria, a few Nigerians that were reported, someone said they, they can't send money back home as they used to before. Someone from Kogi said he now just eats one meal a day. Hey. His name was mentioned. <laughs> Another Nigerian, um, Okwe, says that he's affected by the dwindling value of, um, the dwindling value of okay. their, their buying power being going down increase and 100% increase in cost of living has caused a lot of hardship, mm -hmm. which I could testify to on my last trip that many people were really complaining. Um, well, that's, all, that's the last it's paper we can so take. Stupid. Mm. My, my, my four There's wives have been asked yes, you that I'm comedy. Please just tell us. So the the um, Honorable Dogowa, you know him, the popular yes. one from Kano, was speaking on her, his competence and responding to those who said he was a high level uh, temperamental person and he wasn't competent to vie for speakership of the House of Assembly to succeed the uh, Femi Bajabi Amila. He said, I have never had a divorce. I am a man married to four wives and eight, 28 children. And that, that I have not had a divorce. I have kept my family together shows that I am more than competent. Oh, my so, God. So this I thought is... this clowning has to stop. You should I, remember that he has a criminal charge against him. I have. I have and, yes. And he's with, yes. Yes. I have, I have, I have seen a comedy skit on pre-election on this kind of comment, and I felt this was ridiculous. It can never happen. Now. But now I'm seeing a live person saying <laughs> this, like, this is my credibility. I have four wives and 28 children. Perspective. And I manage them well. Well, it's for you to judge. <laughs>